Hello guys, so welcome back to my channel. This is Zima Tutorials. And as you know, what I do here is to help you prepare well for exams on the use of English and on literature. And today we are going to be looking at the complete summary of the novel Second Class Citizen by Wichi M. Chetan. Second Class Citizen by Wichi M. Chetan. Please watch the video attentively and watch it to the end so you'll be able to answer any question on this text in your exam. Please do well to subscribe to the channel, click on the like button and share the video to your friends. Now, without wasting your time, let's get right into the video. The novel is made up of 13 chapters with each chapter narrating a phase in the main character's life. And the novel is centered on the main character called Adha. The first chapter tells us about Adha's difficult childhood experience. She was born into an Igbo family who believed so much in the superiority of a male child over a female child. She was the first child in her family and was born when people were expecting her to be born as a boy. Her mother later had a boy who was named Boy. And when Boy grew up, he was sent to school, but Ada was not because she is a girl and would get married in the future into another family. But this did not go down well with Ada and she had a great desire for education. One day, the community of Igbo people living in Lagos gave an elaborate welcome to an Igbo man that traveled to England and was coming back after studies. This made Ada to dream of traveling to England, but she did not discuss this with anybody because it would be inordinate for a girl like her to dream of traveling to England. One day, she took a broken slate from her house and sneaked to school. The school she went to was a mission school different from the one that her brother attended. On her first day of school, she was laughed at, but gradually she settled in with the help of the teacher. The teacher, Mr. Kole, convinced her to send her to school and she was sent to Ladilak Institute, which is the same school her brother attended. During this period, her father died and she was forced to live as a maid with her uncle and drop out of school. Hence, she joined a free missionary school where she completed her primary education to the common entrance examination and was among the top five which gained her a scholarship to study in a boarding secondary school. At the end of her secondary education, she got married to a young man called Francis, who was at that time an accounting student in the university. As an educated girl, her bride price was 500 pounds, 500 pounds, which was meant to be used by her family to support boys' education. All the money she earned was used in taking care of Francis' education and supporting Francis' family. One day, she discussed her dream of traveling to England with Francis. When Francis discussed it with his father, he asked Ada to rather use her money to sponsor Francis' education abroad and take care of Francis' mother and Ada's children, which means Francis would travel to England for studies or expense paid by Ada, while Ada remains in Nigeria taking care of her in-laws and children. This she agreed to with the intention of traveling with her children later on instead of arguing with her in-laws at the moment. After some time, Adha managed to convince her mother-in-law to allow her to join Francis in England. Adha and her children, Titi and Vicky, traveled to England via ship. As they arrived to the port, Francis came and welcomed them, kissed her in the public, and when he saw Vicky, he was very excited and said now that he could die peacefully. Adha rebuked the statement. He told Adha that the whites make jokes about everything, including something as serious as death. Adha, having worked with the whites in the library in Nigeria, told Francis that he was lying. And Francis said she had changed, that Adha he knew could never say he lied. Adha didn't talk about it again. On getting to Francis' apartment, Adha discovered that it was only one room and inconducive for a family to live in. But had to put up with it since Francis could not make a better accommodation arrangement for them. She was pressured to work in a factory where other Nigerian women living in England worked, 
but she refused until she got the kind of job she wanted, which was a job in the library. And this was surprising to her black neighbors. They wondered how she got the job and were jealous of her. Getting a first class job instead of doing a second class job of working in the factory with them. And her job gave her enough money to pay for Francis' education, feed the whole family, pay the house rent. In fact, Francis was not working. And that was the one paying all the bills. On the night Ada came to England, Francis got her pregnant and she worked so hard in that condition at the library to pay all the family's bills. When Francis, who had stopped attending classes and decided to study on his own at home, complained of the children not allowing him to concentrate on his studies and had paid a minder to take care of the children during the day. This minder is white and she treated at her children like trash. She would keep them at the back of her house, which was very dirty. And her own children, she would keep them at the front of her house to play. One day, Ada came to see her children. She saw how neglected they were. She saw Vicky drinking water from the toilet pipe. This infuriated at her so much that she reported her to the agency that had credited her as a minder. But she denied. She denied all of the allegations made by Ada. This alone shocked Ada because she never knew that the wise could lie. Then she wondered why the whites believed that they are better than the blacks. One day whilst in the library where she worked, she received the information that her son Vicky was sick. Even before she was told about Vicky's health condition, she already felt it and before her colleague could Finish passing on the information to her. She guessed rightly what she wanted to tell her. Then she rushed to Trudy's place. Trudy is the name of the minder. So she rushed to her place and an ambulance was already there to take Vicky to the hospital. And I felt Vicky's health condition wasn't that serious to require an ambulance because she thought that Vicky was only sick from malaria, which is a common sickness among African children. And one of the doctors told her that it may not be malaria. The name of the hospital where Vicky was taken is Royal Free. Royal Free. And due to the word free in the name of the hospital, Ada was very skeptical. She even imagined Vicky's organ was going to be stolen in the hospital because to her, you can't get any good thing without paying for it. So the fact that the hospital was a free one made her very uncomfortable. At the hospital, it was discovered that Vicky had contracted meningitis and had sat on a bench in the hospital waiting after Vicky when a nurse approached and asked her if Vicky was her only child. She said no and was advised by the nurse to go check on the other child, but I wondered how she would explain to her that her value and importance to her parents-in-law depends on Vicky because he is a male child and Titi is only a girl with little value in the eyes of her in-laws. And I researched about meningitis and discovered that it was as a result of the dirty environment Trudy kept her children. She comforted Trudy and threatened to sneak into her house at night and kill Trudy if Vicky does not survive it. Trudy later on packed out of the house with the fear of Ada fulfilling her threat and in case Vicky does not survive the sickness. Trudy was rid of her accreditation as a minder and fortunately Vicky survived. One morning as she was getting off for work, she noticed that Francis was holding a note and looked gloomy. When she asked what it was, Francis did not talk. Then Ada went ahead to take the note from him and read. The message on the note was that they should vacate their apartment. The two of them began house hunting and every door seemed bad against them because they were blacks or because they had children until they heard about Panobo. Panobo is one of the Nigerians who abandoned everything they owned in search of English education in England with the hope of returning as aristocrats to rule the country but unfortunately got carried away by other activities in England in their hopes of becoming aristocrats were dashed. And her and Francis finally secured an apartment in Panobo's house. The house lacks toilet and bedroom. 
After they have settled in Panobo's house, Ada woke up one morning and didn't feel like going to work. She felt unusually heavy. Her baby was not due yet, but she wasn't herself. She managed to get dressed for work. On reaching to the rail station, she discovered that the railway workers had gone on strike and she couldn't go to work. But she was afraid of coming home and be called lazy by her husband, who is at home. When she got home, Francis, her husband, started questioning her on why she came back home. He went on to preach about the biblical virtuous woman whose reward is worth more than rubies. He kept on talking and talking, and as he went to get a book to support his point as to why Ada should work until she drops in order for him, Francis, to be honored in the cities, Ada stood up and went to the hospital. As she got there, she sat on a wooden chair in the surgery room. She fixed her eyes on a poster and concluded that the ribs on the poster belonged to a woman because it was fanciful and wondered why women should receive most of the punishment for eating the apple in the garden. Since Adam also ate the apple, a woman had to carry and bear a child, work and on top of it all, having to have cancer. Then people began to trickle out of the surgery room. But Ada was not in a haste to see the doctor, even though she was in so much pain. When it was her turn to see the doctor, she allowed the woman after her to go in. Then the woman informs the doctor about her. The doctor came out herself and called her in. In the discussion, she told the doctor that she wasn't going to have her baby in the teaching hospital but at home. When the doctor inquired to know why, she couldn't tell her because she didn't want to start crying in the process. Francis had told Ada to put to bed at home so they could get the grant government gives people who give birth at home. As she scampered to the house amidst serious pains, but not as serious as real labor pains, she pressed the doorbell as she had forgotten her keys at home in a hurry to leave Francis. Then the midwives whom she was supposed to call at the onset of her pains met her and soon she began to bleed. She was then taken to the hospital where she had her baby via C-section. In the hospital, she noticed how other women were showered with love and care by their husbands and relatives, why she didn't even have a night dress but wore the hospitals until she was demanded to get her own nightwear and return the hospital's dress. She stayed in the hospital for days and watched how other women were brought flowers, cards, and how they really received love and care from their husbands. She wished for such care from Francis and even decided she was going to tell Francis to buy her two nice night wears with her own money just to feel loved. Before the hospital management made it a thing of duty, thereby removing the glamour of receiving a night dress from her husband, even though they were going to be bought with her own money. When Francis came, he came with a letter and he was very excited about it. He gave it to Ada and hurried her to the last paragraph where her boss had decided to pay her a lump sum of money and hoped she used the money to take a holiday and get some clothes for herself. Francis told her to send the money to him to pay for a cause. When Ada asked him if she had died during childbirth, who would take care of the children? Then Francis told her that he would send the children to his mother and this annoyed Ada so much that she ordered him out of the world. She regretted marrying Francis and prayed her children do not marry because they wanted a home. And that married Francis because she needed a home, since her mother was taken over by her uncle after the death of her father, and she was sent to work as a maid in another of her uncle's house. She prayed they marry because they love and respect their men, and not to their highest bidder. She taught Francis to buy her a night dress, and she specified that she wanted a blue night dress. Francis asked her if the money hadn't arrived, what she would have bought the night dress with. Ada didn't have the energy to reply him as she was still losing blood. Francis bought her a blue night dress that has the same shape as the hospital's dress. When it was time for her to leave the hospital, she left without thanking or saying goodbye to the nurses and doctors that took care of her. Because she was ashamed and her baby didn't have new baby voice like other babies. But later, she regretted her actions. Since Ada could not work in her condition, Francis was forced to get a job of posting letters during the Christmas period. But he complained of how hectic and how risky the job is because he imagined being beaten by a dog 
while posting letters. But he had no option than to do the job since Ada could not work. And I felt so sorry for him and felt very bad for allowing her husband to face the difficulty of working and the risk of being beaten by a white dog which the whites value more than the lives of the black people. As she was taking Titi to the park, she felt dizzy and some pains. Then she regretted feeling bad for Francis. On her way back, she saw a woman doing the same job Francis complained about and got very angry for letting Francis make him feel so bad for him. Since it was Christmas, parents were getting gifts for their children, including Mrs. Noble, who bought from Never Never Man. Never Never Man is a type of purchase that you have to pay by installment. When Mrs. Noble asked Ada if she had bought gifts for her children, Ada said no because they were members of Jehovah Witness Church, who believed that Jesus was not born in December but October. Then Mrs. Noble asked if she celebrated in October, but she said no and wondered why Jehovah Witness members do not celebrate in October. Luckily, her boss in the library where she worked sent her toys for her children. Mrs. Noble had invited Ada's children for a tea party on the Christmas day, but a night to Christmas, Ada noticed that one of Vicky's ears was swelling and she wrote petroleum jelly on it. In the morning, the ear was more swollen. Then Ada called Francis, who was at the numbers watching TV. Francis went out to call their doctor, but the doctor wouldn't come because it was Christmas Day. Then Francis reported to the police and they followed him home. And when they saw the condition of Vicky's ear, they invited a doctor who was a Chinese man. And when the doctor saw that the cause of Vicky's swollen ear was bed box, he showed Ada and Francis how to get rid of bed box. In an unorthodox way. In the evening, Mrs. Noble brought some jellies for Vicky, but she refused to eat them because they were too colorful for food. On Monday morning, when Ada's family was asleep, Adam went to have a bath in a public bathroom, which they used. As she waited outside the bathroom, she admired the bed that was singing early that morning. After her bath, she got ready to take Bubu, her third child, to the hospital for weighing. As she got to the hospital, she met a nurse and requested that she be given a birth control pill. The nurse gave her a literature, that's a book to read, and a form to fill. And in that form, there's a space where her husband has to append her signature to show that he is in support of the process. And knowing that Francis would not agree, decided to fill the form, sign on her own space, and forged Francis' signature on Francis' own space. When she went to the hospital to get the pill, she met a woman who had itchy ratchets all over her body. The woman told her that it was the reaction of the birth control pill she was given. This meant at her who wanted to opt for the birth control pill to go for the cap, which had to be fixed on her body. In the night, Adam went downstairs and fixed it on her body, and when she came up, Frances noticed she was walking abnormally and asked what was wrong with her, and she said she hit her leg on the bricks. She, as she was coming upstairs, Frances didn't talk to her. When Frances wanted to do something with her after the children had slept, Frances asked again, and she confessed everything to him, and she got badly beaten by him. And Francis went on to invite the nobles to explain to them that Ada had gone for family planning without letting him know. This bothered Ada because she knew that Francis had only succeeded in making a fool of himself. And now people know that she's been beaten about by her husband. And that the man she has been working for is just a fool. Francis was told by the nobles that there is nothing wrong in going for family planning but blunt Ada for not selling Francis as a client, but Ada didn't want to bother explaining that she told him. A few weeks later, Francis' results came out, and he felt, as usual, he blamed Ada and wrote to his parents about the cab, about the family planning, and Ada wrote to his brother, Boy, explaining everything, and Boy asked her to come back to Nigeria. By the time Francis' parents' reply came, and I was already pregnant again. 
After Adal discovered that she was pregnant, she went to an Indian doctor and told him about her predicament and asked him to help her terminate it. The doctor gave her some pills which did not work. At work, Adal became more friendly with her colleagues who she had not been associating with. After discovering she was still pregnant, she confronted the doctor and the doctor said the drugs that she received from him was not meant to abort the baby. But Ada knew it was meant for that because of what happened to her after she took the drugs. She warned the doctor that he would be blamed if the baby was born imperfect. On her way home, she met an able man, Mr. Obara, who followed her home and encouraged Francis to get a job so that his sons can respect him. Mr. Obara did not mention the girl child, Titi, as if Titi does not exist. Ada decided to attend all the prenatal classes and take good care of herself throughout this pregnancy. She told Francis to cut up for himself because the money she had was running low and that she would fend for their children. Francis asked her to write it down. She did without hesitation. Hunger drove Francis to start working as a clerical officer in a post office. He did not tell Ada how much he earned. He only paid the rent and gave Ada, Ada three pence to run the house. Then Ada told him that she would go into civil service and wouldn't tell him how much she earned and the date she was to be paid. First he said he would then prevent her from working. Then Ada reminded him that they were in England, where a husband's signature is not required for his wife to be employed. When Ada was to have her baby, she made the arrangement for flowers to be delivered to her at the hospital. And she made sure she put up a smile all through her stay in the hospital. When she was discharged, she tipped the nurses that took care of her and wrote them a thank you letter when she got home. Francis did not care about Ada all through the period she stayed in the hospital. But Ada made sure she took care of herself and the baby. So Ada decided to try her hand in writing, which had always been her dream. So she bought a book that helped her to learn how to write and sat down to write all through the period she was nursing the new baby. During this period, she wrote the manuscript of the book she was going to call The Bright Prize. Ada enjoyed the fact that she was beginning to live like a housewife during the period she was nursing Bubu, that is the new baby. She would take Titi, the first child, to the nursery and the babies to the park and do her shopping. She discovered that she could have three hours of quietness after the children had had lunch and she would use those three hours to write the novel The Bright Prize and also use those three hours to knit sweaters for Francis and the children. After she is done writing The Bright Prize, she gave it to her colleague at the library to read and they did and told her to consider publishing because it was really interesting but Ada did not have the intention of publishing that particular script and one of her colleagues, Bill, called the script Ada's brainchild because Ada said she felt fulfilled after writing it and she felt as if she just had a child. At home, she persuaded Francis to read it, but he refused. One early morning, as Adam went to shop for the house, Francis read and burnt the script. When Adam saw what he did, she could not take it, because to her, Francis just killed her brainchild, which means Francis can kill her children. She got a job in British Museum as a library officer. Francis quit his job as the clerical officer in a post office because he felt Ada was earning enough money to take care of the family, but Ada maintained her stand on Francis taking care of himself. She got a two-room apartment where she had to cope with cockroaches and rats and moved with her children. She decided to move into a new apartment due to the constant beating that she received from Francis. And as she was leaving, she was badly beaten again by Francis to the extent that Mr. Nobo had to involve the police. She left with her children and a bag of rags which are her children's clothes. Francis promised not to look for her and her bastards, and I was pleased to hear that. After one month, Francis talked to Titi and Vicky till he discovered where they lived. One afternoon, Francis came banging at the window. Ada opened the door and questioned 
Francis what he was doing in her house after he promised not to look for them. Francis told her that in their culture there is no such thing as divorce or separation and that his father used to knock his mother about and his mother never left his father. Then Anna went on to ask him if there was any month his father did not pay the rent, if there was any day his father did not provide food and clothes for him and asked him if there is anything his children can say that he had ever bought for them. And I regretted why she did not see the red flowers when they were dating. When they were dating, Francis never gave anything to his mom. Rather, it was his mom that gave him. Other Nigerian students in England combined their studies with work to earn money and send to their mothers. But he did not want to do the same because he does not care about his mom. And that is the same reason he does not care about her. As they kept on arguing, fight ensues and Ada was badly beaten again and Francis threatened her with a knife. The landlord, who is a Nigerian, did not intervene in the fight because he believes it's just a squabble between a husband and a wife and which is common amongst Nigerian couples. They kept on fighting until an Irish man living upstairs intervened and Ada sued Francis to court. Ada refused to invite the doctor that treated her to testify in the court because if she did, Francis would go to prison. Even when the doctor offered to testify against Francis in court, Ada did not want Francis to go to prison. All she wanted was for Francis to leave her alone. In court, Francis denied all the allegations and even at her surgery that he broke, he said it was just an accident that he didn't even know that it was a radio, whereas he intentionally broke the radio just to break at her heart. He also denied being married to Ada and told Ada in the native language that he had burnt their passports and the children's birth certificate. As a result, there was nothing for Ada to show as an evidence to prove that she was married to Francis. And Ada could not provide a marriage certificate when she was being asked by the court to provide a marriage certificate to prove that she was married to Francis. And when the judge noticed that he was new with a wise man, asked Francis to make contribution towards the upbringing of the children. And Francis said he would rather have them adopted. But Ada did not agree to this. Rather, she said that the children were hers and she would not disappoint them. She left the courtroom, despising the court, and met her old classmate who paid the taxi that took her home. This is where the novel ends. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you understood it. I can answer any question on this particular novel in your exam. Please click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and share the video to your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video. Bye for now.